Welcome to Paltech Virtual Talks on Processing of Fragile Bulk Material. Bastian Sötemann from Lindor is talking about mixing and processing protecting particle integrity. Have fun, enjoy and empower yourself. Um, product integrity is key. Mixing processing of powders and granulates, respecting their particle size and shape. It is today, April 27. And by coincidence, it's our national holiday once a year, the birthday of our king. But that's what, that is not what this is all about. Um, I would like you take, to take you through an agenda, a little introduction about the company, who I am. Um, would like to talk to you about mixing technology about typical products um, for that and um, and machines about that. Um, I try to tell you about a lot of different things, uh, but like the predecessor um, uh, who was uh, also talking um, general technology and about his company, I cannot um, uh, be completely objective. So I uh, don't have too high uh, expectations. I'm, I'm not a seller here, but um, um, I am still from Lindor. So Bastian Soetman is my name. I'm the owner, managing director of Lindor, a company in the Netherlands. Uh, we also have a, uh, a company in England. Uh, I'm on the board of some recycling thing and I'm a, a graduate and alumnus from uh, the T Technical University in Delft. Um, our company, we were founded in 1963 in Dordrecht, a, a mid-sized town, but one of the oldest towns in the Netherlands, uh, very close to Rotterdam. And uh, we were founded as a general engineering and machining company. And then in 1989, when the, the founder passed away and his only child, son, who had decided to become a commercial pilot, had inherited the company, he went to 80% flying and started to manage the company and said, okay, we also need to have our own product. And that is where the first mixer was, um, uh, was built. And now we have well over 500 mixers installed worldwide. We do about 25 mixers a year. We have testing centers in the Netherlands, in the UK, Poland, India, Japan, and Singapore, and a worldwide agent support network. Um, a little bit about mixing uh, technology. Um, the, uh, there are several mixers in the market and, and many of you know probably a lot of these, but I just want to give a bird's eye view of what is, what is on the market and what are the typical different options that you have. And none of these mixing concepts are better or worse than any other, I would say. Uh, they all meet a certain purpose. So it's not to find the best mixer. I mean, the task is more to find the right match between your application, your product, and the mixing concept, and then the manufacturer of the mixer that, that fits your purpose. So you have ribbon mixers on the left. Uh, that's, a, a, as you know, a mixer. Uh, that is widely available, uh, often quite cost effective because it's offered in so many uh, ways by so many suppliers. There are several, I, I just mentioned a couple of different suppliers. Um, you have the RT or the plowshare mixer, which finds its origin in Germany uh, from Lödige, uh, uh, but also made by many other companies now. The twin shaft pedal mixer, which originates from Norway, uh, from Mr. Forberg. Uh, but it's also now built by many, many others. Uh, then you have our mixer. We make that. There are also some other people who make similar, not exactly the same, but similar rotating drum uh, mixers like uh, Boone in England or Munson in the United States or um, in France, there's another one. Sorry, the, the name escaped me. That's a professional uh, aberration probably. Uh, but when I think of it, I'll, I'll mention it again. Then the conical mixer, which is a widely um, implemented industry standard from originating from the Netherlands, actually, from uh, Nauta, uh, but now uh, featured by Hosokawa and Bolts and Heilig. Uh, then you have the vertical ribbon, is how I call it. Maybe it's the wrong name, but it's built by Gruber Ruberg and, and Amixon. 
and uh, the double cone blender, which is made by many companies. And then you have the IBC blender, which is actually part of a, co of a logistics concept. And they pick up an IBC and they rotate it around. Each have their uh, advantages and disadvantages. The RT mixers and the twin shaft pedal mixers are very, very fast. Uh, they can be a little bit more, uh, uh, how do you call it, destructive. They, they introduce more shear forces. The UT mixer is not as fast, introduce some shear forces, but you know, is, is often quite cost effective. The conical mixer is much more gentle. Uh, the vertical ribbon mix is very fast. And then the gentle touch mix, as we put it on the market, the rotary drum blender or the DC blender or the IBC blender, they are quite gentle. Now, what is the difference between the rotary drum blender and the DC or the IBC blender? Uh, the uh, rotary drum blender, as I'll show you in a slide or two, has a true mixing trajectory. And therefore, it'll, it'll blend um, and become homogeneous at a much shorter time, and it reaches a higher homo homogeneity standard. However, the DC blender and the IBC blender, they have logistical uh, advantages, and they are in the market for many, many years. Going to the next one, a little bit more of technology. What is behind these different mixing concepts? You can divide the um, yeah the, the mixing technology in two, and I made like three different uh, parts. It's convection mixing and it's diffusion mixing. Convection mixing is all about having basically having a shaft and a tool and and driving the tool through the matrix of particles through the powder that is. And then uh, in that, so you can think of a ribbon or of a plowshare or a paddle or a spiral or, or many, many different uh, uh, possibilities. But then you can have a closer look and they say, okay, you have some that you would call a force flow. So they don't go as fast. They just push part of the matrix away for the other matrix particles to, to fill in the void. And in that way, you create a movement of particles. And if you do that long enough, you, you create a, a level of homogeneity. Or you can have a special shape form and, um, um, and, and kind of whip it through the particle and fluidize the matrix. And in that way, basically, the particles are going to fly. And, and in that way, they, they kind of go through each other and they create a, a level of homogeneity. Uh, these are typically the ones that are quicker. So you can think of the plowshare mixer, we call it the Lodigus and so on, and the twin chef pedal uh, mixers like the Forberg or the Dinesen uh, who makes those. They're very, very quick and they're fluidized really. And then you have diffusion mixing and diffusion mixing is actually totally different altogether because here you don't have a shaft with a tool that's driving through the powder matrix. Actually, what you have is you have an apparatus where the powder or the particles are brought to a stage where actually gravity is taking over and gravity drives the individual particles to start moving. And the big difference between these two is that with a shaft and a tool, it, you, you produce a point mechanical force with a gravity it's really a field force so it's really that every particle gets the same level of pull or of a mechanical force uh, if you will uh, acceleration and therefore you have a complete different different mechanics if you will so the the powder is actually sliding down or falling down or whatever way it is depending on the design of the machine uh, and every particle has, uh, has the same or a similar uh, acceleration. And if you guide that properly, you can have a true mixing trajectory. So uh, this is expressed these different types and the different designs of machines. You can differentiate them in the, in the level of shear. Uh, you have high shear uh, machines and low shear machines. And the high shear machines they, um, uh, yeah, they, they create, create more, more shear. So if you have very fragile particles or heat sensitive particles, then uh, you uh, would tend to have more problems if, if, if you don't want them to break in the high shear and you should go more to low shear. 
our type of mixer and others as well, but our type of mixer is on the very, very low end of uh, low shear. So we are lowest shear, I would say, in the market. And you then we talk about about one watt per kilo product, whereas in the higher shear, you talk about 10 or, or way more than, uh, than that. Uh, and our motto is actually shear uh, can be good for your product, but if not necessary, keep it as low as, as possible. How does uh, our rotary drum mixer, how does that work? Uh, you have a, a horizontal drum, it rotates slowly, the product is fed in and is lifted up by these veins, by these scoops and brought to a position where actually the, um, uh, the, 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 the particles start to shift down um, through uh, gravity and then it's flowing back and that is how you create a trajectory. In the uh, next picture, a little bit bigger, this is a 1500 liter mixer with two rows of uh, scoops. It's coming in, it's going up, it's sliding out. You get an uh, accumulation at the back end where the outlet is. And therefore you get a backflow and a backflow that helps in the quick movement of the product and actually the quick mixing of the product. And at the end, there's a circular disc on the outlet uh, that's by pneumatics that's opened and actually now it, the mix has nearly become like a pump. I mean, the, 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 the scoops are actually, the, the powder is sliding out uh, through gravity and it's sliding into the outlet. And therefore, when you rotate it empty, it's emptying 99.97%. It's, it's really getting empty. Far less than a handful is left in the mixer. So this is a, uh, a little bit of a, simulation to show you not only by talking, but also by images how this works. So you see the different materials flowing into the rotating mixer. You also see an injection nozzle, by the way, to inject liquids if that's needed. 30% of our machines are equipped with that. And then when the outlet is opened, you see the powder flowing out. And it's just a very small, small uh, short illustration uh, but this is the essence how this uh, how this works and and how you can actually a powder or granulate how you can mix it to homogeneity in a relatively short time and in the meantime um, uh, with all respect to uh, to the presentation before glad which goes way further in this technology but we also spray in liquids either to give an aroma or to do something to the particles to give it a color um, and even to, uh, to achieve a degree of uh, granulation of agglomeration. Um, I, I wouldn't say it is as controlled as with, uh, with GLAT, um, but um, the customers do, uh, do this in our machine where they combine mixing and some agglomeration. So, uh, another way is I will in a small one, you can oh, fast forward a bit, but this is in reality how it works. It's also a demonstration way to do it. So the part, the product is actually entered. And this is how it moves under the force of gravity. This is in slow motion. And this is how you see where the particles actually move freely through each other, um, but without really forces being exercised on it. And this is then how it is discharging. Needless to say that um, this is for powders that have a degree of flow, free flow ability. If uh, you do this with a wax powder or with a very wet slurry type or, or paste, it, it won't work. Uh, you, you, know, you, you, you only have the gravity to pull it off. <clears throat> now, um, a little bit more theory behind it. Um, if having a rotating uh, drum uh, or cylinder and having powder in it, uh, you can get different types of, uh, of dynamics in it actually. And uh, for mixing, um, we have we are on the in, in the part of the rolling movement to actually mix it without really breaking the uh, the, the particles or not at all actually. 
So that's a rolling movement. And therefore, you can also uh, you have to stay within a certain RPM of the uh, of the mixture to achieve that. You can also go to a cataractic movement where you become much more um, how do you call it? You have much more forces, much faster dynamic, or even centrifugal uh, move, uh, movement. And in kind of reviewing that and considering that, you have a formula and you should take care of your design and your uh, RPMs uh, to, to meet that standard. In uh, so doing testing with, with this, we have our own test center, we test with customers and uh, for ourselves as well. This is what we did with ourselves, uh, where we had a roller dried rice powder. So like a rice porridge that's then dried, made into a powder. And we infuse that with, um, with kitchen salt, with sodium uh, chlorine. And um, uh, so a certain percentage, we mixed it and we mixed it for the seconds that's on the, on the x-axis, on the bottom axis. And what you can see, taking nine samples at each instance, and then actually measuring the conductivity with um, uh, demineralized water in a controlled way. Uh, we did it with the outside uh, party. Um, after 90 seconds, you see a wide spread between the samples of um, uh, conductivity, meaning different levels of sodium chlorine in it. So no homogeneity to speak of. After 120 seconds, a little bit better. After 150 seconds, again better. And then suddenly after 180 seconds, it really gets to a very homogeneous level where you can talk, I think it was less than 3% covariance between, uh, between the samples. So that is how one of the ways to measure um, homogeneity. Every, every application, every user has their own ways, but this is one of them. And it was for us quite practical. Uh, this is another uh, one where you um, uh, look at the homogeneity after a certain amount of mixing time. It was a different test with, man with a tracer element. And there also the interesting part here is since our way of discharge uh, and the mixer keeps on moving on their uh, discharge and the product actually keeps on mixing is that on discharge, you don't change anything in the, uh, in the homogeneity. And these are tests that we've done with um, uh, where you have different sizes. So you have bulk materials less than 30 microns and a minor component with higher than 500 microns. And where you can see, okay, what does that do to your uh, homogeneity uh, in mixing time? So you and again, after three minutes, so most materials are mixed between two, three minutes and five, six minutes. And, um, and you see that over time, actually, it, it doesn't uh, it, it doesn't demix or, or segregate really. And this is a side by side where we use the conical or nauta mixer and uh, uh, and the rotary drum uh, blender. And uh, actually, it was by coincidence that this was discovered was at the research institute, and they were doing milk powder. They sprayed dried milk powder. And they normally use a, 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 an auto mixer in this case, um, and they would fit it for a certain weight in a certain can. And uh, then they took our mixer and they did the same thing, but the, it wouldn't fit the can anymore. Why? Because normally in nauta the particle size would be reduced, and therefore the bulk density would be increased, and you could fit more grams in the same size. And, uh, and, and that's how we discovered that actually the, um, the distribution with the Lindor was not moved here. You see some fines in the, in the other one, in the Nauta. Uh, and it had to do with the, with, the, uh, with the way of mixing and with the time it took to mix it to uh, uh, homogeneity where the Lindor was a little bit quicker. This is the discharge uh, graph. Um, the, we have kind of a, a specific way of discharging. Instead of dropping it out of a mixer, we rotate it out of a mixer. Uh, this is in a 750 liter machine with a 500 liter batch. And you see that it's a linear uh, discharge uh, line until, until the last part where you know, the, the, the last grams uh, will always take the longest. 
because of the uh, the way it works, um, not much uh, energy is uh, is required. And I just took you because you only use the power of the motor to bring the powder up to a certain level where gravity is taking over. So just as an example, if you have a powder of 500 grams per liter and you have a thousand liter batch, that's a 500 kilo batch, then actually the consumption is only 800 watts, so less than a, than a kilowatt. Now, some things about this, some key characteristics. So if you shouldn't be in the uh, mixing business if you cannot achieve homogeneity. So that's their key characteristics is that we don't break it or there's, there's negligent breakage and or heat increase, um, short mixing times, very batch size. So you can go from 10% to the batch to 100%. So you can easily switch, um, ease to clean, etc. Then besides just mixing, we also do other things like drying, heating, cooling. Um, and therefore, uh, this is it's a same mixer, but we now equipped it with a jacket where you can introduce steam and the, the, the scoops are also double jacketed. So you can introduce about eight bar, up to eight bars of steam, creating an environment of 170 degrees with a great um, uh, thermal transition, uh, heat transition rate. Um, you can also use it for water. This is our test machine. And uh, uh, we can also do air heating with it. Uh, but it's the same way where you protect the integrity of the particle. And in the meantime, you can actually increase the temperature and you can, you can dry or, or, or coat or impregnate. To that extent, we further developed uh, a few years ago another concept we call the capsule. It's shown here on the, at the time when we were still able to uh, go to the exhibitions like Powtech. Um, uh, and this is actually how it works. Uh, so you introduce it on the left side, the powder uh, into the rotating machine. It's the same concept, but now what you do is with the double jacket, you introduce a hot environment or hot, actually it's 60, 70, 80 degrees maybe, because when you introduce a vacuum, you can go up to 25 millibar uh, absolute, um, you really reduce the a boiling point of water or any other volatiles. So at a very much lower temperature, you can actually dry your powders or you can dry your, your, your granulate. And that has the advantage that for granulates or powders that are heat sensitive, you can use a lower temperature or you can do it in much less time. So you use less processing time or less time that your particles are expar exposed to, to movements. Typical product. Hello. Have the time in mind, please. Yes, nearly done. So typical products, food, cereals, etc. cetera, uh, deter for chemicals, detergents, polymers, so the wide variety of food, but every time in mind, what is important is particle integrity, the flowability of the products, the friction, the heat, cross-contamination is an operational thing that's always a concern. Static, static charge, so the, 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 the more force you exercise, the higher the static charge, which can have an effect in the packaging uh, uh, later on. Um, uh, dust, you want to go from some flexible small batches to large batches. Cleaning is very important. Allergy and risk control is an operational reality that is more and more uh, prevalent and every company wants to be recipe different. Some examples of uh, products, instant products, in infant formula, detergents, I'll go very quickly through this, battery powders, tea is a, is, is a big um, application where, um, which is fragile. Battery powder, same thing, it's not so fragile, but it's not very good to really crush that a lot breakfast cereals, uh, technical ceramics like catalysts. A lot of the catalysts are made in, in, in our types of machines, snacks, etc. We have our own test center. We can talk for ages. In the end, you need to test it. You need to try it and you need to go to a test center and, uh, and, and figure out how uh, any mixing, because we can do side by side different mixing technologies, plowshare, etc., with uh, rotary drum and side by side and see what is best for your application. Just a very small 
video how we do that nowadays because nowadays we cannot do test live with people so we do it remotely so we do the test and we then have all online and live streaming of the test with the customers who are sitting in their offices somewhere in the world or probably at their homes even if they are in lockdown and actually this works pretty well and um, in the end we generate a report and we go further with the development of the customers thank you this is our smallest machine largest machine everything in between some developments when you want to liquid injection i'll just quickly go through using cleaning in place and some of the installation is an example of the rotary drum mixers key points to take away product integrity is key every application deserves its own best mixer setup so it's not only about our types of mixers it's about the best match between the mixing concept the technology and your application test before you buy optimize after you install use gravity if possible it's equal for each particle it's the same and it's for free stay with low shear as long as possible unless you really need high shear because it has low side effects and tune your operation for future needs smaller flexible cleaner and use pure processing no side effects this is our company when we celebrate a big installation big machine thank you very much <laughs>